solemnly swear that I am up to no good. And Sarah, when you're done, just give it a tap and say, Mischief managed, otherwise anyone can watch it. recorded by my friend George who is here visiting from New Zealand for the summer. If you're interested I will put links downstairs to a video that we recorded his second day here as well as his channel. First off I'd like to say that I'm very excited to be doing this theme. Uh, since George has been here we've been doing lots of nerdy talking about Harry Potter. We were talking about wands yesterday because he was shopping for his very first wand. I just feel like it's very appropriate for us to be talking about Harry Potter this week because Harry Potter is wonderful and nerdy and wonderful and magical and yes. I'm really sad that I can't wear wizard robes for this video because I have yet to purchase my new robes. A couple years ago, for Christmas, my parents got me a Gryffindor tie and scarf, which is incredibly awesome, but I have since realized that I am not a Gryffindor. This leads me to the first question of today. Which house are you in? So there are all those tests that circulate on Facebook that say like, oh, which house would you be in Harry Potter? And most of them are really like obvious as to which house each answer signifies. They allowed you to choose which house you wanted to be in. But then I remember a more realistic test coming out that put you in real life situations and tested out which house you would actually be in. And I was really disappointed at first when the result came back as Ravenclaw. No one wants to be in Ravenclaw, everyone wants to be in Gryffindor and Slytherin. And then as I reread the books and watched the movies and did a lot of thinking about it, I realized that I am such a Ravenclaw. I am such a perfectionist, and I love to read, and though I may not love to study, I love to succeed and do well. That actually sounds rather Slytherin-esque, but you know what I mean. So the next question that we've all been answering is, which is your favorite book? And my favorite book is The Prisoner of Azkaban, book number three. It is amazing, it is the one that I can read over and over and over again. Granted, I can read every book in the series over and over and over again, but Prisoner of Azkaban, I can legitimately just read that book, start to finish, and then when I get to the last page, go back to the first. I love how they set the whole thing up. I love how all of this information with Scabbers comes into play and how Sirius seems like he's after Harry. I just love how it's done. It's beautiful and it's wonderful and it plays out so well. One of my favorite things about book three is the presence of Harry's dad. You know from the beginning that Harry resembles his father, but you find out in the third book that Harry's Patronus, which is a stag, is also the animal that James was able to turn into. You find out who James's best friends were when he went to Hogwarts. I also happen to absolutely love James's best friends at Hogwarts. But this leads me into question number three, which is my favorite character. It's funny because before I started recording this video, I was sitting here with George and we were discussing our favorite characters and trying to figure out who they actually were. My favorite is Lupin, followed closely by Sirius. I love the way that Lupin works with his students. I love the way he teaches them. I love his knowledge. He is such a knowledgeable character. I love that Lupin had a friendship with Harry's dad and has a friendship similar to that with Harry. Even with that, I'm your teacher, you're my student, and I'm also trying to look out for your life aspect in it. One of my favorite things about Sirius is that you spend so much time thinking of him as being like the symbol of death and the grim, and he's so rough and tough, and yet you finally meet him, and he's so kind and loving, and he just wants to protect Harry and take Harry in with him and give Harry the life that he knows he deserves. And it's these kind of characters that show this warmth and this caring that I just absolutely adore. As far as favorite real life memories regarding Harry Potter, I have to say I've got two. I remember the day that Deathly Hallows came out and I had spent the morning reading and then that afternoon I had to go to one of my friend's graduation parties. For his graduation, I decided I'd get him a Barnes & Noble gift card because he loved to read and I didn't know what authors he hadn't read yet. So I get to Barnes & Noble and I'm waiting in line to purchase my gift card and in front of me in line is, I think, a 12 or 13 year old boy clutching his brand new copy of Harry Potter 7. And I said to him, I was like, you're excited to read it? And he said, yeah. I was like, I read the first 10 chapters, and he said, don't tell me anything! And I was like, don't worry, I won't tell you anything, 
but I will tell you that it is amazing so far. And he gave me like this huge grin and these wide eyes and he looked at the book like he was holding gold. It was just a beautiful moment and I loved it. I love seeing other people love Harry Potter. Whether it's adults or little kids or people my age, I love seeing people get joy from it because I know how much joy it's given me over the years. My other favorite Harry Potter moment would have to be when I went to my very first Wizard Rock show. I know I talked to you guys about this, but I'm not sure how much I really talked about how wonderful it was being in a room with all these other Harry Potter nuts. It was just wonderful that there were all these people and they were making music about the boy who lived. In all honesty, I can make a 30 minute long video talking about why I love Harry Potter and why I love the books and each of my favorite scenes and all of my favorite characters and my favorite lines and my favorite creatures, but I really don't think that you guys would want to sit here and watch 30 minutes of that. Because I'll tell you right now, I have been filming for 25 and I have a decent amount of editing to do, don't you think? But really this week has been absolutely magical. I love talking about Harry Potter because it's something that has really affected me as a person and has affected so many other people and it's such a big part of my life. I don't know what I'm going to do when Harry Potter 7 the movie is over. Probably cry myself to sleep and when I wake up the next morning start reading the first book again. So everyone have an absolutely magical weekend and Katie, I will see you on Monday. Mischief managed. There's a Slytherin in my room. I'm a friendly Slytherin though. <laughs>